So the final topic I wanted to look at today, now it's one that's going to take a little while here, is revisiting my Nikhil Harry video. I made, an, I made a video about, I think, three months ago about Nikhil Harry and about whether or not I thought he was a bust. Um, now look, Nikhil Harry didn't have a very good first season at all. He never broke 100 yards in a game, not even 50. Nikhil Harry failed in his rookie year. We have to face that. Despite what his future may hold, I want us all to come to terms with the simple fact that Nikhil Harry failed in his rookie year, and quite honestly is a draft bust up to this point. But how so? The Patriots drafted him for one reason. Well, two reasons if you account that they think he can be a future threat, but primarily for one reason. A deep threat who could stretch the field and turn the defense around. Did he do this? Not at all. Over his first seven NFL games, he only did play seven NFL games this season, another reason why he failed. Nikhil Harry racked up 12 catches for 105 yards and two touchdowns. He broke 100 yards, but it took him seven games to do it, and only caught two touchdown passes. Compare this to the other 2019 rookie wide receivers like Terry McLaurin, who racked up over 900 yards and seven touchdowns, in 14 games. And that looks down on Nikhil Harry. It really does. Because it, it just looking at those stats, it really, really seems like Nikhil Harry is not a good receiver at all. It's like, geez, all these other great receivers were available and they chose him? Come on, man. Then we also have to look to the fact that the, Terry McLaurin did only play 14 games. Or did play 14 games, and Nikhil Harry only played 7. The Marquise Brown, another rookie, had 584 yards and 7 touchdowns. A.J. Brown had over 1,008 touchdowns, and both of those stat lineups, including Terry McLaurin's, drastically outshine Nikhil Harry's stats for his rookie season, even when you bring it down to the same number of games and round out the average. All those receivers still did far better than Nikhil Harry. Apart from this, though, we need to look at how Patriot stars have fair, fared in their first season with the team. Looking at Nikhil Harry, was this all his fault? Like I said, only 105 yards and two touchdowns. No, that was not his fault completely. He was injured. That's a tough, tough thing to go through, and he was put on injured reserve. So he was thrown into the team mid-season, uh, late season actually, when you really look at it, but... He didn't really have a chance to play the whole season with the team. He didn't have a chance to be a Patriot for a full year. And I think that really, really, really hurt how well he performed in year one. I think the Patriots chose him out of the idea that he could be the one that could perform the quickest. The Patriots needed an offensive deep threat. And they thought, hey, Nikhil Harry, let's see. Let's see if you can do it. And he got injured. It's a tough thing. So he failed his first year. He did. We have to come to terms with that. He failed in his first year purpose. But again, let's look at how other Patriots rookies have fared early on. Let's look towards Rob Gronkowski. In his first year with the Patriots, he played in all 16 games and only caught 42 passes for just 500 yards and 10 touchdowns. 10 touchdowns is a big number, but again, only 500 yards. And he has a tight end, so that's still really good for a rookie year. Now, if you use that stat line... To estimate what Gronk would have racked up in only seven games, which is also how many games Nikhil Harry played this year. When you do that math, you'll find out that Gronk, arguably the best tight end of all time, would have only had 233 yards and four touchdowns in that span. And not to mention, Nikhil Harry joined the offense midseason and came off an injury that we can only assume continued to hold him back when his return came around. Compare the stats from Gronk's rookie year to his following year, and the output is incredible. In just his second year, Gronk put up 17 touchdowns and over 1,300 yards. Over 1,300 yards. Another example to look to is Julian Edelman. He only played 12 games in his rookie year, and he gathered together 359 yards and a single touchdown over the course of that time. Translate that to seven games, again comparing it to rookie Nikhil Harry. 
he would have gotten 209 yards and a single touchdown over that stretch. Not much better than Nikhil Harry. So when factoring in the fact that Nikhil Harry was not able to practice with the first team offense all regular season, was not in the game plan for the majority of the season, Josh McDaniels kind of had to throw him in there, as well as the fact that he was coming fresh off an injury, one can argue that he is completely unproven in either direction of the initial question. The secondary question asking, did he serve his purpose in his first year? No, he didn't serve his purpose. But in the further question of, is he a forever draft bust? We don't really know. The door is still wide open for Nikhil Harry to make a Gronk or Edelman-sized impact on this team. The overall conclusion that I have to come to is that he is not a bust if we look towards the future. Arguably, he has the highest ceiling of anyone on the Patriots roster right now besides maybe... Jarrett Stidham. And if he is coached well and learns to use his physical gifts, which he has a lot of, that's why he was drafted so early, he could easily be one of the best receivers in Patriots history. That's a bold claim to make. It is. But how many receivers that are so-called the best in Patriots history were drafted in the first round? That's another thing to look at. If we look toward why they initially drafted him, though, like I've said before, and I'll say it again, one can only assume that it was to solve the very clear issues at the wide receiver position. Some big news, again, that came out with Brady leaving was the fact that Brady was pissed off. He didn't have a receiving core around him to throw to. He did, but was it any good? Was it one you could rely on? Was it one that you could win a Super Bowl with? That's an arguable comment. He didn't have a run game either. Sony Michelle didn't break 100 yards once this season, and that's their starting running back. I mean, come on. <laughs> Sony Michelle didn't do great this year. The offensive line was all over the place this year, with injuries, with blood clots in the center, with the left tackle. I forgot his name, but honestly, I'm quite happy I did because he was worth nothing this year. The Patriots were... Honestly, a bunch of spare parts put together. And it was, like, it, just, it was like watching a car that's driving down the road constantly. You know, a wheel falls off here, and a wheel falls off there. Uh, you know, the side view mirror gets blown off. And they keep trying to fix it while they drive. They don't bother stopping the car. They just keep trying to drive forward. And the car is really struggling. Because with every piece it loses, you, you try to shove in another piece in there, but it's just not the same. You could see it, you know, they tried to shove in Antonio Brown, didn't work out. Tried to shove in Mohamed Sanu, didn't really work out. Besides the first game he was in. So therefore, he could be considered a bust when thinking about why they drafted him in the first place. He really could. But again... My conclusion that I've come to is the thing is he could eventually turn into a thousand yard per season regular. Therefore, if that happens, being a draft boom, again, look back to Edelman, look back to Gronk. We can't base Nikhil Harry's first season on the rest of his career, especially when you bring in all the things that are really not football skill related, like an injury, like being thrown into the offense in the middle of the season. Because of those things, Nikhil Harry, I don't believe, is a bust. I have hope in this kid. He has physical potential. He has speed. He has height. He has jumping ability. He has catching ability. He can make plays with the ball in his hands. We saw that in college, and it'll be really, really interesting if we start to see that on the NFL football field this year. But I don't think it's over for Nikhil Harry. There's a reason he's still on the team. It's because you can't really blame him for what happened this past season. So is he a bust? No. Not yet.